Hey, has your boss ever been like this? Hey, intern, what's going on with my coffee? Why is it so empty? No, 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 sorry, wrong clip. I mean, has your boss ever been like this? Hey boss, I got you that data that you were asking for last time. Here you go. Oh, uh, what is this? Is this the data I asked for? What are we gonna do with this? I can't understand this. This is too much. I, oh, it's just too much data. We need a way to look at this efficiently. Oh. What's up guys, Andre here from Markets and Data, the place where I help you find data for your markets and markets for your data. Now, before we go anywhere, if you haven't hit that subscribe button down below, please hit it faster than my high school date turned me down whenever I first asked her on a date. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, that high school date that I asked out was actually Anyways, enough with the shenanigans. And if you are a new viewer or a new subscriber, I want to say welcome and I really hope that I can dazzle you guys with my awesome videos and my future videos. And if you are a returning subscriber, I want to say thank you and I'm super excited to be making this video once more again just for you. Oh, and by the way, we had 200 subscribers on YouTube on the Markets and Data channel, so I'm super excited and I really can't sleep anymore because 200 will eventually lead to 201 and 2 and 3 and so on. You get the gist. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I want to introduce you to a library in Python called Dash. Now, what can you do with Dash, you might be asking yourself. Hmm... Well, just as you saw, Dash is basically a place where you can plot your data. And data representation is one of the most important things in data science. So you can show off your awesome data and show off your awesome artistic skills and impress the people that you are around every single day. Now, I can't really impress any people because I'm really not around any people any day. So I'm gonna leave that up to you and I wanna hear the results from you guys once you show off everyone your amazing skills. Now, finally, let's go ahead and hop into the actual video and write some Python code and graph some data into our awesome new library that we're going to learn about called Dash. Oh my God, I really hope I don't turn out as crazy as that guy one day. But anyways, you're not here for that crazy guy. Let's go ahead and build out this awesome charting library and Dash. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to install Dash on our computer. So in order to do this, what we need to do is just quickly open up our terminal. And once that terminal is open, we're going to head over to our browser. And inside that browser, we're going to go to Plotly and we're going to see the installation instructions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste them into my terminal and separate everything by a semicolon and just run it all together so it will be installed on my computer. Now just remember for your reference be sure to install it with the proper version of Python. So my version is 3.5 3.6 which is automatically configured to the user bin uh, directory inside of my computer. So um, I've had a few people have problems before with installing some of the other dependencies in my past videos. Now once you have everything installed from the Dash library onto your computer, go ahead and close out of your terminal and we're just going to head over to our favorite text editor and we can go ahead and start making imports to go ahead and build out our beautiful Dash app. All right, good stuff. Once you have that text editor open, we're just going to make a new file. I'm going to call mine dash ui.py and we can go ahead and begin writing some code inside of it. Now, I'm going to leave the graph from earlier. I'm going to scooch that in right next to my code so you can go ahead and see what we're building out exactly and so you can reference it because whenever I code, I really like to see something visually that represents what I am writing in code to better help me out. So the first thing we will do is uh, just import dash, then we're going to import output, event input, then some other things from dash, DCC, HTML, and we're going to import plotly as well. And from plotly go, then we're going to import DQ, datetime, pandas as PD, and we're going to import the class that we wrote last time, dat data grab, uh, because that will be grabbing the data from the Binance market and bringing it to this library so we can go ahead and graph it. And while we're at it, we're just gonna go ahead and import some of those beautiful smiles as well.
So once all of those imports are done, we can go ahead and build out a queue. Now, what a queue is, is basically just think of people standing in front of Walmart on Black Friday, right before those doors are about to open. Now you see more people piling up behind all those people standing at the front of the door. And once those doors open, that horde of people just rushes inside and there are more people that are following in the back. Now just think of the queue as the people in the front moving out of the queue from the front of those Walmart doors into Walmart and then the new people are moving into uh, Walmart from the back. <laughs> That's basically what we're going to be doing with the price data that we receive from Binance. We're going to be putting it in a queue, storing it in that queue, and then using that queue to graph those prices. And along with those prices, we're going to have timeframes for those prices, and we'll go ahead and graph those too. So to represent all this, we're going to say X values is equal to DQ, and the max length will be N underscore Q, and which we're going to say for now is going to be 100 data points. Then we're going to have a price list and another spread list. Now the spread is just going to be the difference between the ask and the bid on the market. I originally thought about doing volume, but I thought that spread would be more intuitive and more fun to play around with. And since I really like you guys, I wanted to show you how you can make a graph that has two vertical axes. So you'd have your Y1 and your Y2 on both sides. Now it took me a little while to figure this out with Dash, so that's kind of why I'm showing it to you. Now if you do not want to use double axes, just later on in the code, you can go ahead and clip out that second axis and you'll just have your simple uh, X and Y as you go along. All right, next, let's go ahead and get started on our actual graph. But first, I wanna ask you, what happens to an alligator that drives a boat? He becomes a navigator. Now, you might be asking, why am I telling you this? The reason I'm telling you this is because the reason that alligator becomes a navigator by driving a boat is because he has that vessel which he is placed in in order to have his new position be what it is. Now, the same concept for our graph and the concept is that we're going to need a vessel in order to hold our data and in order to have the vessel what we need to do is we need to program the vessel by saying app is equal to dash that app and then app that layout is equal to html.div now the class will be housing explicit variables and the explicit variables will be in the form of a list now let's go ahead and define those by saying html.dev is equal to the output container dcc.graph and the ID will be equal to live graph one and just to make it awesome and fun, we're going to put animate is equal to true. Then another spot in the list, we're going to say dcc.interval and the ID will be equal to graph update one and the interval will be equal to 10,000. Now the interval is in milliseconds, so 10,000 milliseconds will be 10 seconds and we're going to be pulling price data from Binance every 10 seconds using the class that we wrote in the previous video. Now, if you didn't watch the previous video, don't worry about it. You can put any type of price data or numbers as long as they are inside of a list, inside that queue, and just call it later and graph your own data that way. And with this, we've gone ahead and prepared the container that will be housing all of the necessary things that we will have to graph. Now, the way Dash works is that you need to make a few references back to the actual graph and the container in order to be able to update the price data systematically and at that interval. And in order to do this, we're just going to use the decorator app.callback. And for the output, we're going to say live graph, comma, figure. And that will basically reference the graph from before where we said ID equal to live graph one. Anime is equal to true. And the next thing inside of the decorator will be the event that triggers that. And the event will be a list as well with the event class. And inside that event, we're going to say graph update one. And we're going to say at that interval that we specified earlier with the DCC dot interval. Okay, so that's it for decorator. And that should allow us to update our graph periodically uh, specified by the milliseconds uh, from earlier. Okay, let's go ahead now and just build out the function that will be graphing everything, calling the data, 
and just making everything nice and pretty to hold everything. So let's go ahead and say dg is equal to data grab dot get Binance spot and that will go ahead and pull the spot prices from Binance market. Next we're going to say x values dot append daytime dot daytime dot now from uh, the daytime module so we have a accurate time of when that data was pulled. Next we're going to append price list with dg.loc and we're going to locate ETHUSD and the price of Ethereum and we're going to append the queue from earlier that we built out in the code and then next we're going to append the spread list and we're going to find the spread inside of the ETHUSD and we're the same reasoning with .loc on uh, DG once we're calling the data frame and it's going to locate the USD ETH and put all those prices into the queue up top. Okay, now that's pretty much the hard part is just pulling all that data and then storing it somewhere efficiently so it can go ahead and be graphed. Now, uh, like I said earlier, you can just replace the functions that I have and the class for pulling Binance data with maybe some random numbers if you want to make this faster or just an already existing list of numbers that you might have. Now, if we reference back over to the left hand side, you will see that we have a line and we have some dots. Now, those two are separate things, the line and the dots. Now, let's go ahead and code up the line that we will be using for our prices. And to do this, we're going to say data1 is equal to plotly.graph objects and scatter. We're going to say x is equal to the list of x values y is equal to the list of price list then we're going to name the line and we're going to name a price and we're going to say the mode will be lines and now we can modify the markers by saying the marker and inside of a dictionary data structure we're going to say the size of the markers will be 12 and then the color will be hashtag cd9045 and as you can see from the dots on the graph, that's the color that you will get. Next, we're going to have data2 is equal to plotly that graph objects that scatter. And we're going to do the same thing here with our x values by having x list and the x values inside, then y equal to list of the spread list. And then we're going to say name is equal to spread, mode is equal to markers, and then marker is equal to size 10, color, and then RGB 27, comma 135, comma 4. Now the reason I'm representing the colors differently here is just to show you that there are multiple ways that Dash registers those colors and you can put in the format that you like best. And now one of the most important things to add is we're going to have to say y-axis is equal to y2 in order to differentiate the first y-axis from the second y-axis. Now let's go ahead and finally return everything so we can go ahead and try to run the app to see what happens. So we're going to return a dictionary of data and data will hold the list of data1 and data2 for our price data. Then the layout will be go.layout and then x axis will be range of our x values, the first, and x values of the last uh, value inside of that list. Then X axis will be the range of int min price times 0 0.95 and max price list of 1.05. Then the title will be price and number of ticks will be five. Now the reason we have the 0 0.095 and 1.5 is because we need a little bit of room at the top and bottom of the graph. So then our prices will not be graphed up there to where we won't be able to see them. Next, we're going to define our Y axis with the range of int min spread and we're just going to say times 0.99 and int min spread times 1.01 .01. then the title will be volume the side will be right overlaying our y and the number of ticks will be four next we're going to say title of the whole graph will be price versus spread and just because i like you guys so much i'm going to throw in a little bonus for you by helping you guys make your graph look nice and pretty so we're going to say our legend is equal to true our paper bg color is equal to this hashtag 2a313b our plot color is equal to this and our font is equal to the hashtag a8b4c4 and let's go ahead and close up our dictionary that we're returning and next which is going to at the bottom say if 
underscore names equal to underscore main underscore and then app dot run server and set debug as equal to true now the that little line of code basically says that if you are trying to import one of the functions from this particular Python file, then it won't be trying to run everything all at once unless you're actually executing this uh, Python program uh, with the Python interpreter directly. Oops, let me go back and change that title over here to spread, just so we're not confused whenever a graph pops up. All right, let's go ahead and run everything by clicking on this little URL. And so our browser will pop up and we can see what's going on with those prices. All right, now as you can see, those prices are collecting and the graph is slowly building out. I'm going to fast forward just a bit so you can see what the graph looks like and maybe 20, 30 minutes time frame. I'll catch you soon. All right, awesome. It looks like the graph is really going now and there are some really good points that we see uh, between the spread and the price. Now the graph isn't perfect, it's a little bouncy and if you know how to fix this, uh, please let me know in the comments down below because I've been having trouble with this library in particular, uh, especially when it comes to this type of animation. But um, if you check out the documentation on Dash, then you will see that the library is good for other things as well, including little sliders and sorters and also uh, data table looking things that you can animate with Dash. So I will go ahead and leave that link to the documentation down below so you can go ahead and check it out yourself. But as far as the graph is concerned, that's pretty much it for the graph. I think we did a really good job of making it look nice and getting it to work and showing us our data. Now, if you want to throw your own data in there, um, I'll basically have told you where you can do that and you can also leave out the second axis if you don't want to write that much code or if it's just better for your particular graph. All right guys, that's pretty much it for Dash. And as you saw, we got to make a really cool graph and design it, make it live. And I think it looks pretty cool on my end. Now, if you have any pictures that you take of your graph that you make, please send them over to me. I would really love to see them and share them with the people down below. And I would really highly recommend that you go check out the documentation too for Dash and check out what other cool things you can do with it because what I've shown you in this video is just basically scratching the surface just a bit of what the full library has to offer. Now, I wanna really hear your comments down below and hear your thoughts on what you thought about this video and if I can do anything better or if you would like to see any future videos in the future. So with this, I'll leave you guys to it. Have fun and I'm looking to hear from you guys soon.